okay, deputy, you look like you've seen a ghost. Welcome back to Red Recapped. Today's movie is The Traveler, released in 2010. There will be some spoilers in the following, so, let's begin the film without further ado. The movie begins with a faint scene of a young girl named Mary Black playing with her cat in a forest. She seems happy at first, enjoying herself with her pet, but as soon as shining the cat runs away, she chases after it, and the worst nightmare of every parent happens to the poor girl. A child killer takes away her life, and just like that, everything changes. On a quiet Christmas Eve at a police station in New York, two policemen, Hawkins and Pine, arrive wet from the rain. They purposely annoy Galloy, a front desk officer who usually cleans the station. Meanwhile, Jeannie and Sherwood are doing paperwork in a separate room, where they get too comfortable with each other. Hawkins and Pine enter and tease the two. They also mention having no reception since a storm broke out, which is not really helping them get into the holiday spirit. In another office, Detective Black plays a voicemail from her estranged wife, saying she needs time away from him as their relationship has never been the same since Mary's passing. They are obviously very affected by the horrible death of Mary since he's a detective, after all, but he failed to save his daughter. They are now broken and struggling to cope, making it harder for Black to do his job. Moments later, a mysterious man enters the station. He approaches Gulloy, saying he wants to confess to murder. Gulloy panics, feeling threatened by his presence, and calls the other officers. Everyone arrives, and Black takes control of the situation, so the man is taken to the interrogation room. Black then reprimands Gulloy for pointing his gun at the man. Shortly after, the local stormtroopers arrive to inform them about an accident on the interstate that will take the whole night to clear up, so they'll divert traffic and close the off-ramp. After that, Hawkins is intrigued by his confession and asks who he killed. However, the man doesn't say much but intimidates him by playing mind games, somehow ticking him off. Suddenly, Black enters the room and stops him. He starts the interview by asking for his name. Strangely, the man claims he's nobody. Black thinks he may be playing a stunt, so he warns him he could get charged for making a false statement. But he gets another strange statement from him again, saying that before the night ends, he assures him that he really committed murder. With a creepy feeling, Black instructs them to conduct basic procedures on Mr. Nobody, like getting his prints and mugshot to see if he's in the system. Quickly, as Mr. Nobody shoots up, he comments on Black's customized pen with the inscription, to the best daddy in the world, as if mocking him, and then confesses to murdering six people. In the other room, the couple, Jeannie and Sherwood, share an intimate moment as they pretend to kiss under the mistletoe. Suddenly, a faint figure of Mr. Nobody shows up at the door, shocking Jeannie, but there's nothing there. This obviously kills the mood, and she leaves to do something else. Meanwhile, Hawkins is taking mugshots of Mr. Nobody when, all of a sudden, he sees blood coming out of his head through the lens. Creeping out, he checks on him but sees nothing. After that, Pine takes his prints and is shocked to find he has absolutely no fingerprints on all his fingers. Mr. Nobody gets more mysterious the more they try to identify him. Gulloy is then called to lock him up, so he takes him to his cell. As they walk through the hallway, the lights start flickering and burning at the same time. When Mr. Nobody enters the cell, he whistles an eerie tune that catches Gulloy's attention. Gulloy turns around and is shocked to see Mr. Nobody walking towards him, even though he had just locked him up. When Mr. Nobody disappears, he immediately checks and finds him still inside. At Black's office, Pine and Hawkins report that Mr. Nobody has no prints, and they think of possible ways he did it. But everything makes it impossible for the prints to be completely removed. Two hours into the graveyard shift, the lights start annoying them, but they will have to bear with it since the extra bulbs were all smashed, according to Gulloy, which is another very strange occurrence. Hawkins then checks the mugshots of Mr. Nobody but only finds his clothing in them without his head and hands. He decides to man up and investigate by asking him directly. Mr. Nobody remains mysterious, keeping his initial claim as nobody. Hawkins diverts his interest to the tune of his whistle, which he says is Mozart's Requiem, the Death Mass. Completely creeped out, he rushes to leave him. On the other hand, Black is frustrated on the phone with his wife. It's definitely hard to spend Christmas without the family, but it's harder for him since they are not on good terms, affecting his communication with their children. A flashback to Mary reappears, and the night just gets worse. Black then orders Pine to get Mr. Nobody for further questioning. However, Hawkins seems out of place when Pine asks for his assistance. Suddenly, the lights flickered again, as if warning them of an impending threat. When the two got to cell number four, they found it empty. Instead, they find Mr. Nobody on the third. Pine also finds his deck of cards inside, which completely puzzles him. Meanwhile, Hawkins feels anxious while smoking, 
reminiscing about when they all tortured a drifter into confessing to the murder of Mary. Pine comes for him, and he reveals that Mr. Nobody resembles the drifter. He also thinks having all of them together is a terrible coincidence, as it was the same night they did the torture. However, Pine just shrugs it off and promises him a couple of drinks after work to get him inside. In the interrogation room, Mr. Nobody confesses about his first victim, describing it uniquely as a woman with blue hair and long legs and a red dress. At the same time, Hawkins goes to check on a few cells downstairs. As Mr. Nobody narrates his scenario with his victim, Hawkins is suddenly trapped in a dark cell, thinking Gulloy is pranking him. Mr. Nobody's narration happens simultaneously with Hawkins, where an unknown entity viciously attacks him, doing exactly what Hawkins did with the drifter. It whips him and cuts his tongue with Gulloy's missing scissors. His scream was so loud that everyone heard it. It was already too late when they got to him. Hawkins is left whipped to death and tied to the window with his back tattoo exposed. A tattoo described precisely by Mr. Nobody. Black returns to the interrogation room, already suspecting Mr. Nobody as his hands were magically uncuffed. He immediately orders the cuffing of Mr. Nobody's hands and locks the room before letting the couple know that Hawkins is dead. Shortly after, they get together, and he orders Pine and Gulloy to search outside. The two rush through the pouring rain, where something unexpectedly falls on Gulloy's head. He panics, and Pine helps him remove it, and they discover that it's Mary's dead cat, Shining. When they got inside the station, they informed the team that they had found a dead cat belonging to Mary. Then Pine shares that Hawkins acted weird before he died, saying that Mr. Nobody reminded him of the Drifter. Suddenly, a clear flashback of the torture of the Drifter played, where the six of them participated in harming him. They tortured him almost to death, forcing him to confess to killing Mary. Black was extremely desperate and frustrated, pinning the crime on him since they saw him near the scene. He ordered every one of them to physically abuse the Drifter as if he weren't human, just to hear his confession. And Black ends it by stabbing his chest with the pen Mary gave him. It was clear that what they did as officials of justice was an abuse of authority and inhumane to a Drifter who claimed he was innocent. It was a memory they wanted so badly to forget, but it came back, haunting their consciousness and lives. Black apologizes as they remember him again, and Sherwood justifies their action with the chance that Mary could still be alive at that time. However, Gulloy frankly slaps them with the truth, Mary was already dead, and the state police killed the suspect who did it, so the drifter was indeed innocent. The two get into a heated dispute, with Gulloy pointing a shotgun at him. Black intervenes and tells them they are all guilty of what happened that night. Gulloy adds that the drifter is still in a coma in Crestdale and blames Black for the guilt he feels. Since he made them lie about the drifter attacking them first, they had to defend themselves. Suddenly, loud noises with heavy footsteps are heard on the roof. Black orders Pine and Gulloy to check the roof while he and the couple check on Mr. Nobody. On the roof, Pine separates from Gulloy, making way for the mysterious entity to execute its sinister act. A rope hangs Gulloy as Mr. Nobody narrates about his second victim, describing him as a coward who will face the consequences for doing nothing to stop the night of torture. In a flashback, Gulloy appears distressed while watching them torture the drifter. Sadly, he does nothing to save him, making him still their accomplice and guilty of the assault. Shortly after, Pine returned for Gulloy but couldn't find him. Gulloy, nearing his death, is reminded by the rope of when he strung up the drifter, pleading his innocence. And just like that, Gulloy is gone. Because of the incident, they finally suspect it's Mr. Nobody's doing, even when he's cuffed in the interrogation room. They immediately transfer him to the cell, but before they do, he says some really blasphemous words, somehow relating to the series of deaths at the station. Black then takes the opportunity to ask him about Mary, who was murdered a year ago. He also mentions the drifter they arrested, who was the same as him, a nobody without Prince. However, he doesn't really get any answers from him. Moments later, Pine decides to check if the drifter is still in a coma, as he could still be a possible suspect for everything that's happening. Pine inquires at Crestdale Care Center regarding the condition of the drifter. They are shocked to discover he died this evening at 8.15 p.m., the exact time Mr. Nobody arrived, as logged by Gulloy. This probably gives them the creeps, so Black suggests calling in some help. However, as soon as they use the telephone again, there's no signal. They think fast and separate into two groups to get to the stormtroopers. The couple heads out against the harsh weather to get some help. They stop by the forest, where the trooper's car is parked. Meanwhile, Pine and Black check Mr. Nobody in his cell. He continues his confession there. As soon as he mentions his next victim, Black orders Pine to get the couple on the radio. On the other side, the couple comes out of the car to check on the parked trooper cruiser. Strangely, Jeannie approaches the radio but hears a different message from a year ago. Sherwood also hears a similar message on the radio from the other car, 
describing Mary's awful death. He then checks the forest and makes a terrible mistake, falling into the trap. At the station, Black loses it as he understands the narrative of Mr. Nobody pertaining to the murder of Sherwood. He tries to stop him but seems invincible, effectively dodging the bullets. As Mr. Nobody continues the narrative, Sherwood is attacked at the same time. Sherwood is dragged further into the forest, where he meets his fatal death as he is shoveled in the stomach, digging his organs. The shovel was what he used to beat up the drifter, exactly like how karma would bite him back. He lies there helpless, ultimately facing his death. Unfortunately for Jeannie, their love affair is cut short when she meets his lifeless, brutally murdered body. She rushes back to the car to return to the station. Confused and shocked by the sudden situation, she loses control of the car, causing a commotion. She runs to Pine and Black, telling them that Sherwood is dead. That is when Black realizes that Mr. Nobody kills them with his confessions. He then connects it to history, when executioners working at the guillotine would barricade themselves, fearing that the condemned victims would return as vengeful spirits to hurt them. They figure that the drifter has taken the form of Mr. Nobody for revenge. Inevitably, the blame comes back to Black for getting them into trouble by accusing and torturing the drifter. However, Black clarifies that he was only trying to save his daughter. They then plan to abandon the place using the squad car Jeannie used. Unfortunately for them, the spirit won't let them leave, causing the car to wreck. Suddenly, Mr. Nobody starts with another confession, remarking that it is the worst. Jeannie is then locked inside the car and immediately suffocates. She struggles for a while as the two do everything they can to save her, but the glass won't break until it's too late. As the spirit beheaded her, a flashback of when she suffocated the drifter plays painfully in the background, reminding them of each evil deed they inflicted on him. Because of the series of deaths, Pine decides to confront Mr. Nobody, but his violent intervention causes his death. Mr. Nobody attacks him inside his cell and beats him brutally, just like when he assaulted the drifter mercilessly. He takes his eye, quoting his words before, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Sadly, by the time Black got to the cell, Pine was almost unrecognizable. Black slumps there in distress, losing his entire team in one night. After the appalling deaths, he becomes disoriented, wandering nearby streets while hallucinating about Mr. Nobody. However, he still ends up at the station where Mr. Nobody awaits him, saying that all roads lead to him tonight, the place where it all started and will end. He confesses that he wronged an innocent man, but the plot twist is that he wasn't innocent at all. He admits he was the one who murdered Mary, and he is the child killer. Black is in disbelief after believing he is really innocent, motivating him to kill them. However, he discovers he wants revenge for putting him in a coma for a year. And all he dreamed about was vengeance, a dream so powerful that it became a reality. Now, Mr. Nobody speaks his last confession, and the victim is none other than Black. As Mr. Nobody is about to end Black, Black uses his pen to injure his ear so he cannot hear the confession. He tries to get away from him by hiding under his office table. There, he experiences a clear illusion of Mary expressing her willingness to help him. As Mr. Nobody breaks down the door, she shares the secret to eliminating him by saying his real name. He doesn't like his name, and being a nobody makes him strong. So, when Black discovers his name with Mary's help, he boldly threatens him and says his name is Stanley Harperton. With Stanley surprised and distracted, Black takes the upper hand and shoots him, effectively injuring his physical body and disappearing in thin air. The movie ends with Black having a brief, sweet reunion with Mary, now able to rest in peace. That's all from the video. Thanks for watching.